Remember my little sample I put together and I showed you on a video and I just did some bullion knots and things on it and it was like my, my, what was the, what did I call it? My thinking piece or something because you just pick it up and put it down when I need it. It's not going to be anything specific. It's just a little working piece that sometimes I'll do if I fancy working with colour perhaps or just switching off and mindlessly stitching and going through the motions really. Well I put a little piece of cloth in um, it's a surface, I'll try and pull it, it's a surface I made for my Embroider Embellish Create class and in it there's a tiny bit of vintage cloth I don't know if you can see that there so I've been mimicking that and mirroring the colours of that in little patches of seeding stitches so I just wanted to do a little bit more today and I thought I would share that with you um, it's a poor day for photographs I would struggle to get a decent photographs to show you so I thought maybe a little video and I'll just talk about seeding because seeding stitches are so effective and I'm sure you know how to do them and I'm just going to do a couple over here you need to be able to see just going to do a couple over here just to give you a sense of how quick and effective it is really um, I've got my needle ready threaded with stranded cotton in the pink and the green so I'm just literally maybe going to do about three or four of each because I don't want to be I don't want this to be a long tedious video for you. So I use two strands of stranded cotton and I separate them first. I take six strands, I cut a length of six strands initially and then I totally remove each one separately before I rejoin them. And that means they sit flatter, they sit much nicer on the cloth and they don't twist as easily if they're separated first before being rejoined and threaded into your needle. So there's four little green stitches and seeding can work if you take it in different directions when you're stitching. It looks quite effective if they're all going off in different directions. There's four, they've kind of formed like a little circle but I'm hoping to put that right when I add the pink. So I'll just fasten that off and then I'll add the pink. I've got my needle ready threaded again, again with two strands. Um, and see if I can make that work a bit better by changing the direction of the pink. And traditionally, they don't overlap, usually. Um, so this is the area I'm working here. They don't tend to overlap, but sometimes I like to overlap them because that adds a bit more focus as well. So I'm just going to come through and do a few pink ones. Um, just to show you how effective that can be. And this is literally taking me seconds, isn't it? If I didn't have to keep stopping to fasten off and pick up my needle, etc., then this, you know, this is so quick and yet so pretty. So I think the green ones probably were placed too close together or were too long. But you know, that's not a fatal mistake because I'm adding interest now by adding the pink. Now look how much different it looks now. I've just put the pink on there. So that's took me literally 30 seconds really, all told. So, and I think that's really effective. And this area here, that's really effective. And then here, I've added a bit of lemon in there. That's even more interesting. So seeding, I mean, you can use seeding. I've actually got a little sketchbook here. And this isn't gonna be a masterpiece, so don't, you know. So you could use it on a big open area. Um, so place your stitches randomly in different colors over a big open area all going in different directions little tiny stitches different colours perhaps like that or if you had like a motif like say a heart shape I'm trying to find the page here I'm rubbish Oi, right so say you had a heart shape I'll just draw a rough heart like that imagine that's I don't know and the back stitched outline of a heart or chain stitch some kind of thick edging stitch heart shaped or even a, a cutwork heart with fabric underneath plain fabric underneath add masses of little seeding stitches in there with complementary colours that go with the cloth that you're using you may be using a brightly patterned cloth so you could pick out some of the colours from that brightly patterned cloth and put seeding stitches in there into that little heart that looks like a strawberry now um, but you know and denser than that even just do them as many as you can cram in there and it can look absolutely brilliant okay so I hope you found that useful and I'm sure most of you know how to do seeding stitches anyway but if you google it you'll see it so there are seeding stitches so back to the actual embroidery so I've got seeding here just with pink and green 
and then the difference there in the lemon. So, you know, have a go, try it. And I meant to say, I didn't say, I know I said the wrong thing at the beginning. This surface on here I created um, by, well, a specific method that I use on my extending embellishment class, not my embroidery embellish create class. But it's a, a beautiful surface for adding stitch. You can see that I've got French knots down here as well within this piece and you could even do little French knots in these open areas any open areas you've got but this today was specifically about seeding so I just wanted to show you on a larger really scale with a better view of the whole thing how effective they are remember this was the vintage piece I added to the cloth I created and two little areas of seeding here and a larger one over here with lemon incorporated now I may actually put some lemon in here that would knock it back a little bit perhaps um, I'll think about that and perhaps do that later and see what that looks like 